Hi everyone. Today is day 40 uh, of our 30 days 30 machine learning projects challenge. So let's start. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, today is day 40 uh, and here is the problem. So the flow is going to be same if you are following me uh, uh, and know about what we do to solve the problems. We take help from ChatGPT, ask questions, follow up questions and everything. And gradually the idea is to keep solving problems and understand what they what the prob uh, the problem or what the code is trying to solve and ask questions understand about the model used in the in solving the problem and gradually learn about uh, machine learning concepts for starters i would recommend to go and check out the uh, introductory courses from Kaggle. Uh, they should be enough to help you get started with this challenge and start solving from day one i what i do uh, i uh, solve this problem record myself i don't put that much of efforts in recording and editing i just uh, convert it into mp4 and then upload it on youtube so it is sort of a log of me developing uh, a development log uh, not of like i don't think it is kind of a tutorial video but yes i don't know if it is going to help you i do explain everything and but uh, parallelly i'm learning myself so it is not that i know about the topic in advance and i'm preparing a tutorial material and uh, then i post the uh, the progress post where i where you can find the detailed explanation in textual format and get the code also uh, and uh, i also upload not this one i also upload the uh, okay so if i go here i also upload the git repository uh, the link for my git repository where all this code is being maintained so you guys go and uh, you guys can go and check out uh, so i'll come back to the challenge uh hang on yes so this is the title of our of the problem cluster Gro grocery store customers based on purchase history by k means so today i guess we'll need to understand what k means is so we have to apply a clustering algorithm uh, we have been doing regression uh, we have been doing uh, classification i guess today it is sort of clustering so we will follow today's task cluster grocery customer based on Purchase history with K-means will follow a workflow similar to the previous project, correct? We will load, pre-process the data, then use K-means algorithm to cluster uh, customers based on their purchase. Here is the, okay. So here is the step by step. Uh, uh, so it says we will be working with customer data which typically includes variables like total spendings, product category preferences frequencies of visits, etc. Each customer will be a data point and based on purchase history, okay, we will group them into clusters that represent similar purchasing behavior. Okay, so we have to cluster them based on the similar purchasing behavior. Then we will process, pre-process. We will load the data set and clean it by handling missing values. Okay, we have been doing it with a lot of our problems in past. Normalize the data set so that the each feature has equal weight. I guess we did that by applying uh, scaling uh, on, on one of our problems. Uh, K means uses distance to uh, group points. So normalizing is important to avoid one feature dominating the others. We did that. This is also called as standard scaling or scaling technique. And we understood it why we have to do. So basically, uh, it should not happen that one feature dominates the other feature because one feature has large range. Uh, yes. So uh, that you can find, I guess, in which problem? Uh, classifier, passive, aggressive, I guess here. Not this one. Uh, 
and then collaborative filtering using user rating matrix no not this one i guess for yes uh psychochemical properties using svm if we go to the problem number six if we go to the problem number six so i should see standard scaling yes we have applied scaling and the reason for applying scaling is uh, because we wanted the, uh, we applied standard scaling or the scaling transformation is the process of transforming our, our data so that all features or variables are on similar scale or range it is commonly done in machine learning to ensure that no feature dominates the other feature simply because of its larger numerical range so i would recommend you to go and watch this problem so you can understand it in depth because you have already covered it now i'll come back to this uh, we will be applying uh, scaling to normalize the uh, features then we will we will use k means algorithm which is unsupervised learning technique if you remember we have been doing supervised learning uh, we have been implementing supervised learning techniques only uh, until now so we will first understand what this unsupervised learning technique is it divides and then we will understand what this k means algorithm is so i'm going to can you please explain in easy words with example what unsupervised technique is and then k means clustering algorithm uh clustering algorithm yes so we will understand that uh, each customer is uh, assigned to the nearest cluster based on the distance that is Euclid. okay but we will understand that we will then use elbow method to find the optimal number of clusters which is determined by plotting the sum of the square distances from each point to its assigned cluster center the points where the graph graph bends gives us the good concise choice of k this also we will see and elbow method so we i have asked chat gpt to explain me what unsupervised learning technique is then uh, k means algorithm k means algor clustering algorithm and elbow method and then after this we will visualize and we have been doing this step for all our previous problems so let's understand these jargons okay in unsupervised learning the machine is given a data set that does not have any labeled output okay so it does not have any labeled output the goal is for the is for the algorithm to find hidden patterns or relationship within the data so its own so its own without any on its own without any uh, without being told what the right answer is okay so if you see in the supervised learning we always have target in the we have always had a target in our data set right and on the basis of that the relation between the feature and the target uh, we used to train our models in supervised learning we don't have that target we have to figure out our own the algorithm have to figure out the hidden patterns 
uh, and uh, the relationship between the data uh, so it does not have any target that is why it is called as unsupervised learning we will um, understand it with the help of an example so uh, imagine you have basket imagine you have a basket of mixed fruits but you don't know what types they are okay understood an unsupervised learning algorithm would group similar foods together based on the features like size color and texture without knowing in advance which fruits are apples okay so consider we consider we are considering we have a basket of fruits and nobody has told us this these fruits are like new we don't know what apple look like we don't know what an orange look like so we will group we will group fruits based on the features for example what size the fruit is of uh, the color of the fruit the thick texture of the food probably the taste of the food if it it's taste it tastes bitter it tastes uh, sweet it tastes it has no taste so based on all these features we are going to group them and that is called as unsupervised learning okay now uh, where do we where where do we apply this technique we apply this technique in customer segmentation grouping customers based on buying habits exactly this is what we are doing today we find uh, we do, uh, implement this technique to find anomaly detection using unusual patterns okay and then we we i guess we did that no but we had the full uh, target it was the label data uh, if you remember we did uh, we did something like that yeah 11th find the anomaly detection with isolation forest but we had the data telling us that this is the uh, unusual data anomaly okay now uh, we, the other application would be data compression because we yes we dimensionally dimensionality reduction uh, i mean i don't know how this technique apply is applied to data compression so i'll not comment maybe in future we'll solve this I mean, I'll definitely. <laughs> so I'm loving this solving one problem every day challenge. Now coming back to the second thing, which we had asked ChatGPT to explain, K means clustering. K means is a popular unsupervised learning algorithm used for clustering. Okay, its purpose is to divide data points into K clusters, K where each cluster contains similar data points. okay uh, how it works choosing k you start by deciding how many clusters k you want to divide your data into so we choose it assigning cluster centers the algorithm randomly selects k points in your data set as initial cluster centers so it is going to so let me visualize it k means okay so if i go this is how it is looking before k means this is how it is visualizing as different clusters okay k means k means k means nice let's go back uh, so initially it assigns a random cluster center or called a centroid assigning points to cluster each data point is assigned to the nearest centroid based on the distance using the euclidean distance okay we all know what the euclidean distance is is the distance between the two points in a graph in two dimension points that are closer to a centroid are grouped together uh, to that cluster okay so so the points if i go back here the points for example this blue point this point is closer to this centroid so it will be part of this uh, cluster this is closer to this uh, centroid so this is part of this cluster this is point uh, closer to this centroid so this is part of this uh, cluster now recalculating centroids after all points are assigned the algorithm recalculates the centroids of the cluster by finding the average of all the points in okay so it recalculates to see if it has calculated it uh, correctly or not set number 3 and 4 and 3 and 4 as in again recalculate by finding the average of each average of all points in the cluster 
and then uh, we calculated and then assign all the uh, points nearest to the centroids uh, then recalculate so step 3 and 4 are repeated until the cluster algorithm algorithm don't change anymore okay okay so example let's say you have a data set of customers and each customer has two features total amount spent or frequency of visits okay if you set total amount spent and frequency of visits we have two features in our data set of customers if you set k to 3 k means might group the customer into three clusters uh, high spenders who visit often uh, low spenders who visit rarely and those in between okay so it can divide into three clusters so we have understood it it looks like this it uh, randomly selects a centroid and then uh, group find the point distance between each uh, I mean assigns e as each point to the nearest centroid and then uh, the, uh, this way dis uh, distributes each point to the nearest centroid and creates a uh, cluster Cl create clusters now after this it recalculates the, by averaging each point nearest to the centroid and then recalculate the centroid and again uh, find out the cluster by calculating the difference bit, uh, between each point and the centroid and select the nearest centroid. It keeps on repeating point this until uh, the changes, uh, 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 the average change that we do to find this uh, recalculate the cluster does not change as much. Uh, so that is called as K means we have understood what su unsupervised learning is does not have target or labels uh, K is, means clustering as in uh, I mean how many clusters we have to divide and then creates a uh, sorry selects a random cluster and then select uh, the nearest centroid based on the Euclidean, Euclidean distance and keeps on repeating until there is no change then we are left with elbow method the elbow method helps determine the optimal number of cluster k in the ok so elbow method helps us deciding uh, what k we have to choose understood how it works run k means for different values of k 1 2 3 4 5 so we are going to run this k means algorithm for different value of k's for each value of k calculate the sum of the square distance inertia between data points and this assigned cluster centers this tells you how tightly grouped your data points are within each other okay plot the inertia against number of clusters the graph will usually have a bend or elbow okay the point where the curve bends is considered it it looks like the uh, gradient grade descent is something decent no gradient gradient descent this I remember we solved something like this. Yes, sir. Gradient descent uh, algorithm. The, so then it finds the elbow as in the curve bend and it is considered to be the uh, optimal K. Beyond this point, adding more cluster don't improve the clustering significantly. Okay, so let's see. Elbow method okay so this is how it keeps on calculating the uh, square uh, distance of each point sum of square distance that is inertia between data points and their assigned clusters uh, how this helps in telling how tightly the data points are tied to the clusters uh, within that cluster uh now uh, it plots a graph uh, and it plots a graph and uh, the bend you see going forward will help with nothing as in will help with will not help further in dividing or creating more clusters so that is going to be the best thing so here okay because now here the changes between the cluster is is happening to I mean not happening that much so if you say with two clusters it is looking like that three clusters like that 
four clusters like that no three five clusters like that ten clusters like that 25 clusters if you see let's open it here the uh, inertia the algo method is here algo method is here here also algo method makes sense but here it is going too much right uh, here the changes the clusters we are increasing the change between the clusters data points of the nearest clusters is not significant so it does not make sense so does not improving improve the clustering significantly that is why that is called as optimal k imagine you are trying so example it gives imagine you are trying to segment customers into groups based on their purchasing pattern by using the algo method you might find the ideal number of clusters that is 3 as the graph graph bends at k is equal to 3 going beyond 3 clusters would not add much extra value that's what i was saying so at the optimal value after going further we do end up with more clusters but it will not help in distinguishing a unique features between the clusters so yes we have understood it thanks and uh, now it makes sense makes things clear now start with solving the problem also do suggest where can i get sample data set for the problem so let's start with solving the problem we have uh understood a lot of theory in the start of the video itself meanwhile it is doing that generating the response let me go and turn on the uh, fan because i'm it is it is hot here Let me uh, give me a second. Let me turn it off. Yes, I guess the audio. I mean, it should be coming as very bad background noise. So yes. Okay. So yeah, let's start to solve the problem uh, of clustering gross grocery store customer based on purchase history with key means. We'll follow a step by step approach, including where to get a sample data, data set for customer segmentation. Uh, we can get this. You can use customer data set that contains details like customer ID, total spending, frequency of visits, or purchasing history. Here are some sample data set you can use. uh we can get this from the uci machine learning repository a whole sale customer data set we have never used this i have actually never used this so let me go and try it from here uh we have been getting uh, our data sets data data sets for most of our problems from kaggle we can get it this one also but i am really i really want to get the data set from here so it has been donated on the uh, 30th of march 2014 let's download it it has seven features 414 instances uh, has i can see it has downloaded it uh, let me go here and unzip it and then let me go to my pi pi charm and move it to my data set folder of the this repository so i am going to download folder it starts with wholesale customer data and i am going to move it here so today we are downloading the data from this this place uh whole this you see in irwin machine learning repository let me go here and here i am going to rename it I don't like this type of name. I like a little um, name with underscores. I don't like spaces in my file. File names. 
and it should look like this yes yes and this is the data i can see yes perfect good for solving a day uh, day long project i mean up to a problem in one to two hours so yes one we have got the data thanks okay now load the data uh, thanks i am going ahead with um with this uh now let's i'm saying i'm going ahead with this i'm doing this because i want to I want chat gpt to give me the solution around the same data set that i'm using because if i get stuck i should be able to get proper help from the chat gpt okay i can see it has generated the response so what we have to do we have to do, to load the data so let's start by creating the uh file for today's problem so it is going to be a python file and day 14 so let's start and add it to our repository the problem is let's specify the name of the problem so the name of the problem is we have to cluster grocery store customers based on the purchase history using k means algorithm and data set we are getting the data set from here okay now let's start import pandas as panda and the step number one is load the data okay uh, here what we do um, the data is going to be panda dot read csv and we we'll specify it is going to be data set and it will start with wholesale customer data dot csv uh, let's read this data using the head function of pandas data frame run this day 14 file not run it should be python okay so this is how the data is looking like okay good now what we'll do let me go to the chat gpt okay pre-process the data is pre-process the data of how we are pre-processing so we are checking for check for missing values so what we are doing we are printing the data if the data frame has any null value we want to just print this and then i'll apply let me co uh, comment the first thing so we have how many so it's is nice okay and it will do some let's run it and see what this so we don't have channel has zero null region has zero milk has zero okay so anywhere it fit is going to has null value it is going to show two i don't see any value with two 
ओके ओके दैट इज एवरीथिंग इज सो आर डेटा इज वेरी गुड टूडे एंड देन आई एम गोइंग टू प्रिंट दैट एंड देन इफ नो मिसिंग वैल्यू प्रोसीड विद नॉर्मलाइजेशन स्केलिंग द फ्यूचर स्के इफ नो मिसिंग वैल्यू प्रोसीड विद स्केलिंग द फीचर्स और क्या बोल वट डू से नॉर्मलाइजेशन ओके सो फॉर दैट वट टाइप ऑफ ओके ओके वी आर यूजिंग सेम टाइप ऑफ स्केलराइजेशन दैट वी हैव यूज इन आर डे सिक्स प्रॉब्लम विच वॉज अबाउट प्रिडिक्ट वाइन क्वालिटी फ्रॉम दी साइको नॉट साइको फिजियो केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ एस वी एम सो देर ऑल्सो वी हैड अप्लाइड स्केलिंग सो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू वट स्केलिंग इज इन डेप्थ यू कैन गो एंड रेफर टू दैट वीडियो और दिस थिंग बट टू गिव यू एन ओवर व्यू स्केलिंग इज द प्रोसेस वेयर वी वट वी डू वी गेट दी मीन सो इट इज अ प्रोसेस वेयर वी डू दिस वी ट्राई टू नॉर्मलाइज ऑल फीचर सो दैट नो वन फीचर डोमिनेट्स द अदर सिंपली बिकॉज इट हैज लार्ज न्यूमेरिकल रेंज ना वॉट इज अ न्यूमेरिकल रेंज consider i have uh, two features height and weight height starts from one the minimum is 150 maximum is 180 so the range is from 150 to 180 here the minimum range is 55 and the maximum is 85 so 55 to 85 it is so if you see these these whole large values so it should not happen that height is dominating the weight feature in uh, when we are training the model so so uh, now to handle this uh, first we calculate the mean and then we calculate the standard deviation mean uh, is calculated as calculated as the average of all the data standard deviation uh, is calculated like what how we calculate standard deviation i forgot actually how yes standard deviation is calculated uh, how how dispersed how scattered the data is uh, from the mean so we get the standard deviation once we do get that we apply original mean minus mean uh, original value minus mean and divided by divided by standard deviation uh, once we do that we get the value of each feature around zero uh, and deviation uh, Uh, we by taking the data we have we get the mean of uh, we for each feature we get the average mean with the mean for that feature to be around 0 and the standard deviation around 1 standard deviation which means how uh, scattered the data is so that means not uh, all the values of the feature of all the features is not going to go beyond the difference is not going to go beyond 1 uh so this helps in keeping all the features at a scale and makes uh, gives the data to the uh, model such that no feature dominates the other feature having larger value uh so uh, we are going to apply something similar here the same scaling algorithm um so yes yes so yes let's let's start with applying it so we are going to get this uh, standard scalar from pre scalar on pre processing so let's import let's from um scalar on pre processing import standard scalar and then in standard scalar we are going to create the scalar and standard scalar and then we are going to create uh, scale the data and save it in save it in scale data variable and using the scalar we are going to fit the data uh, what data this data now let's print let's print it 
data scale uh, let's run this file again and see what it shows so you might have to convert it into a, a data frame let's go back and see okay see fit transform we have to create the vocabulary first no yes so see now each all features are coming like this uh, around one only the deviation is not going beyond one and the mean is coming across zero only yes once done we are going to do what uh, once done we will apply step number three is uh, okay so this for unsupervised learning let me put it here and so super supervised this is unsupervised no unsupervised okay british english or american english okay so this is a unsupervised in, in, uh, uh, learning uh, type problem so step number three is apply k means let me go to the solution apply k means clustering so we are coming to this uh, we have to import the k means from the sqln cluster package and uh, yes with, we will also visualize it together so you the we will see the elbow curve so uh, get this matplot.py plot uh, package as well so from sklearn dot uh, cluster import k means from matplot.py plot uh, sorry import matplot.py plot as plt once done let's come to the step number three here what we are doing trying different numbers of clusters so what do we do trying different numbers of clusters that is k so capital k so for we will try from 1 to 11 apply these k clusters where we will tell how many clusters we want we want k cluster random state again the same for the same reason uh, we want to make sure that every time we are running this script this program it creates the same uh, output then we will fit on the the scale data uh, on that k means object and once that we are going to uh, so before that we are going to create an, a list where we are going to impo, uh, push that the inertia of that k means and we are going to plot the graph to see how the elbow metric curve is looking like and that is going to be the optimal k for us so uh, first we are going to create uh, sse sum of squared distances for each case sum squared distance of each each point some square distance of each point is a empty list and it is some sum of square distance of each point for each k 
sum of square distances for each k so what we are doing for k in we are taking from 1 to 11 and for each k what we are doing we are creating k means uh, by k means here we are showing that clusters uh, the cluster count is going to be k and the random state is going to be 42 and then we are going to uh, fit this on scale data and then we are going to uh, push this inertia in our list uh, storing the sum of square distances uh, we are using k means in inertia that's what we have So it's uh, inertia is the sum of the squared distances to the nearest cluster center. Uh, so we are pushing. And what we are going to do, plot the elbow curve to see the optimal optimal k to know about the op optimal k okay so what we are doing we will be using a normal plot a graph uh, okay so let's define the size is going to be 10 is to 7 and then we will plot the graph and we will plot the curve the range is going to be 1 is to 11 for each k data is going to be some square distances the list and the marker is going to be oh. let's run it let's show the x label is going to be sum of next label is going to be number of clusters number of clusters and the y label is going to be the inertia sum of squared distances sum of squared distances that is inner Shia. and the title is going to be elbow method for optimal k elbow method for optimal k and then we will show it since the data is small 440 rows only i don't think it is going to take uh, much time also, we have to do it like for 11 keys. Okay, so I see, I guess probably six is the best. Difference, difference, difference. Six is the best. For me, I guess six is looking the best. Uh, Six or eight is looking the best. Six is looking the best. So for me, for the data set, six looks the best. Uh, but I do see some warning. I see some warning like this. Uh, after getting the optimal values, we are going to train on that. And getting warning. On step number three. On step three. 
so let's say the default value of an init will change from 11 to auto Okay, so it's due to an upcoming change in the default behavior of k-means algorithm and scikit-learn, especially, okay, so it is an upcoming change, which controls the number of times k-means algorithm will be run with different percent or series. This will change, it uh, will change its default value from uh, 10 to uh, uh, 10 to auto. To separate this uh, warning, you can explicitly set the and in its parameter in the k-means function. Here is how you can do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we have to, this is an upcoming change to suppress this. We are going to do not here and in it the default cluster count number is auto. Let's run it and this is now it gets changed. So, yes, six, seven. So seven is the answer. We will go with seven. So let's let's take a screenshot. And this is our this is our seven is the answer. Uh, for the seven looks the best look is the optimal key. Abhi kya karte hain? Okay, sorry, Hindi. <laughs> no, sorry. So now what we do, we will now uh, select the optimal cluster and fit k means. Uh, so step number five, not five, step number four is select the optimal k and uh, range k means. So what we'll do, uh, k optimal is going to be 7 for our case from the elbow curve 7 is looks to be the look looks to looks to be the optimal k now okay optimal is going to be 7 k means is going to be k means we will specify the end cluster as k optimal then random state as 42 and n init because this is an upcoming change otherwise we will get the warning once we do that we are going to train uh, the model the algorithm on the scale data once we do that uh, add the cluster labels to the original data set okay the original data set will create a new column and we are th in that column we are going to add the uh, for each row we are going to add the labels of labels as in the uh, cluster uh label to data set label rows add the cluster label to original data set okay and now we are going to print the data head and see what each okay what for example the this thing belongs to zero cluster this thing belongs to zero th this thing belongs to zero cluster this this customer who uh, belongs who is from channel one region three uh, 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 buys this fresh uh, groceries milk this many times and uh, fresh item this many time grocery this many time frozen this many time detergent paper this many time comes to the cluster one if you see the region for uh, the this 
customer and this customer is same still they are not part of the same cluster because the other features don't resemble the other features don't resemble the same cluster so it looks like that we have uh, successfully trained the model now let's do what uh, we are going to visualize the cluster so step number which step it is step number five is visualize the cluster so we are going to do what um, for that we are going to import decomposition so for that we can reduce the dimension using pc and plot the clusters what is this pc um, i am going to ask chat can you please explain what PCA means and how it helps with visualize actually do actually, actually do explain each step of each line of step 5 so uh, we are on the last step but i do not understand what this pca is used for so we are going to understand that and then we are going to plot the scattered graph to visualize to visualize how these uh, clusters not here how the clusters are looking uh, but let's understand what chat gpt has to say here Oh, it is still generating. Looks like a lot of things he has to explain. Okay, now it is explaining the code. Hmm. Let let it. So it is explaining the last portion. So let us go and decode what PCA is used and what PCA is. So PCA, Principal Component Analysis, is a dimensionality reduction technique that is widely used in machine learning and data visualization. Okay dimensionality reduction technique okay its goal is to reduce the number of which features in a data set while still retaining the most important information pca helps when you have many features and want to reduce the complexity of your model or when you want to visualize high dimensional data into two or three dimensions okay dimensions as as in we have how many features do we have we have i guess two, three four five six seven eight we have eight features right so we so now pca is applied to uh, uh to you know do what to reduce the dimensionality to reduce the dimensionality into two or three features or dimensions uh because our data is a is a complex data has eight features so we will reduce it to two features or three features because it helps to visualize better in two dimensions or three dimensions for now we will go ahead with two dimensions i don't have i, I do not understand how to under, make sense out of three dimensions first i uh, don't know if my computer this laptop is going to support that so we will go ahead with uh, uh, two dimensions for now so pca helps in dimensionality reduction uh, okay now uh, let's visualize uh, let's understand the code so we are here we do specify in how many dimensions we have to reduce the uh, uh, reduce so for visualization so we are saying into into two dimensions now we fit the data into that pca uh, that we had config, configured uh, so the, the scale data is going to be fit on the pca that we have configured uh, now here you can see that's what it is saying pc object specify and components which means you want to reduce the data in two two dimensions why since we cannot visualize data with more than three dimension dimensions easily pc helps us reduce the data set to two two principal components capturing the majority of the variance in the data 
now we are going to train it fit uh, it the data uh, so using this fit transform and how does it do it uh, pc learns how to map the original data into a lower lower dimensions based on the highest variance directions okay it then applies the mapping to the data to the to generate a new features the result data PC is a two word two D version of your original data high dimension data which can now be visualized. Each row in the data PC represents the data points in terms of two principal components. So now we are going to visualize it. Now we are going to visualize it with the help of PLT uh, the that we have already imported at the start of recording this video or solving solving this problem. Uh, so let's understand this line. Here it simply is showing, uh, it, it, it is used to describe the size of the window uh, that we are going to plot uh, or the, uh, the graph that we are going to plot. Then with this line what we are doing, we are saying that we want a scattered graph. This line creates a scattered plot where the axis is the, f x -axis is the first principal component okay, and the y axis are the second principal component. Okay. Okay, so the first axis is going to be the uh, so, sorry the first uh, component is going to be the x axis the second component is going to be the y axis because we are going ahead with two dimensions that is why we are plotting the first dimension on the x axis the second dimension on the y axis um, then uh, the argument okay with this c k means label argument colors the point according to the cluster each point belongs to okay so we are saying that we are going to color based on the labels okay so it is going to plot the points based on the cluster it is part of it is it belongs to and for example uh, this k means dot labels we saw if we go back to our PyCharm, we see the cluster is coming as 0, 1, 2, 3. So uh, the labels are going to hold the cluster label 0, 1, 2, 3 for each data point. Uh, the sets the color map to widths, which provides different colors to different uh, clusters. Okay, we are going ahead with this color thing. So it means we are going ahead with different colors for different uh, clusters the labels are going to be again same hmm. and then we show on the axis we are going to have principal component 1 y axis principal component 2 that's what we are plotting the graph scattered graph for and then we will show it okay so let's let's understand let me copy paste this thing here So what we are doing, we are doing Okay, so this is the explanation that we have understood PCA we are using to reduce the dimensions from multi dimensions to two or three dimensions. Uh, we are going ahead with two dimensions for this project so let's start so we are creating an object of pc so here first import it right so we are going to import it from sklearn decomposition uh, from sklearn decomposition import pca principal principal component analysis and uh, we, what we are doing principal component analysis here we are mentioning the components we want to go ahead with two components as in two dimensions and then we are going to uh, uh, create scale fit the data on those two components uh, using the pc object with that we have created and we will do fit transform the scale data now we will plot the graph. So what we will do, plot, create a figure. The size is going to be 10 is to 7. Then create a scattered graph. 
the x axis is going to be the x axis is going to be the the data set from here it is the first first component and for y axis we will have a uh, second component um the cluster labels are going to be uh the labels from the k beans and the uh, color is going to be with viridis uh, i'll write it we are uh, i mean i'll type it viridis because this will make sure that each cluster is colored with different color the label is going to be k means labels the uh, the x label for the graph is going to be the pca principal component analysis principal component 1 principal compo 1 and the y label is going to be principal component 2 and the title is going to be the title is going to be what k means clustering with pc reduced data k means plus mean with what PCA reduce data, uh, and we will show it. And let's run it. I want to decrease the size of our earlier window from ten seven to seven five. Let's run it. So let me take screenshot because I can use it for my. Uh, progress post and we went ahead with k equals to 7 because this is looking like a window sorry elbow elbow uh, to me uh, and this is how the data is looking like it is two cluster i guess i should hmm. I know this is this should be the answer. I should go ahead with creating. Let me go back to uh, the uh, screenshot that we just took. Here the it is looking like that. Here if we take k is equal to two, k is equal to three. Let's go back. Let's go back. And use case for two, three. Let's run it. Case for two, three. And uh, let's take screenshot. And okay, now it is looking still better. Right, it is, it is looking better. So yes, I think we should go ahead with this only for now. um let's screenshot this as well and yes so this makes i think we have understood a lot today this is uh, our first problem with unsupervised learning technique we have learned what k means clustering is we have learned how to calculate the optimal curve, optimal k using elbow curve plotting elbow curve we also this is our second problem where we have applied scaling technique uh, then we uh, saw how to use reduce the dimensions from multi dimensions to two or three using the principal component analysis pca and then yes so it was it was overall a great day uh, so let's commit it day 14 and at code for day 14 problem and add to the g
git repository let's go to our git repository and see if we can see the file yes we can see the file here <laughs> so yes uh, now we should close the <laughs> recording so thank you very much uh, we'll solve another problem tomorrow uh, so yes thank you very much <laughs>